Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at some more optimization problems. We'll be looking at some geometric applications. So let's go ahead and jump into the first question. So this question says that you have 120 feet of fencing to construct a pen with four equal size stalls. If the pen is rectangular and shaped like the one below, what are the dimensions of the pen of the largest area? And what um, is that area? So we already have uh, kind of a, a picture to go um, with our optimization here. And that's really the first thing that we're going to want to do when we're looking at any optimization question in terms of uh, geometry is to draw a picture. And that's kind of already done for us in this question. So next, we want to consider actually labeling this with the information that we're given. So what we have is we have a constraint on this in terms of our materials. So we have 120 feet of fencing. We really call that a constraint in this problem. What we want to optimize is the area. So we want to find the largest area. And so that's what we're going to be trying to optimize. So let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and label this uh, and see if we can get really two equations. We're going to have a constraint equation, what we have, what materials we have to work with, and then we'll want to consider uh, what we want to optimize, which is the area of this um, pen. So first thing we could do is just consider kind of the lengths and widths of this pen. Um, since this is rectangular in nature, we don't know that these are you know, exact squares um, in terms of the stalls. So what we might want to do is label them with uh, two types of variables. So one way we could do this is with uh, maybe a height for all of the vertical bars, and we'll have maybe W or width for the um, horizontal bars. So we'll have, in other words, this first pen being a height of H and a width of W. So if I consider really the constraint first, so the constraint equation, we could consider that we have 120 feet of fencing. And that 120 feet of fencing is going to be coming uh, split into uh, the width. Looks like we'll have eight different lengths of W. We could call that eight W. And then we'll also have, looks like, one, two, three, four, and five lengths of H size. So we can add that 5H to that constraint. And if I want to maximize my volume, I want to use all of this material, the 120 feet of fencing. And so we will um, add those two components together to add one, to 120. What we want to optimize We usually say that's the optimization function here, is we want to optimize area. So if I consider the area of this whole pen, each of those four stalls make up the four, uh, you know, the whole pen, the area of this structure here, we could say is going to be, well, it's W times H would be the area of one of these. But here I'm going to have actually four different stalls of W times H or W by H. And so we can say that the area here is going to be four WH. And that is the quantity I want to actually optimize here or maximize in this case. So with that, let's use this constraint to be able to optimize, optimize my area function here. The area function right now is a, very, uh, a function of two variables. And to be able to optimize this, I'd like to get it down to a function of a single variable, either w or h. And it doesn't necessarily matter which one you go with. Um, and so I'm going to just choose to solve the constraint equation for one variable, and I'll solve for h. I'm going to solve for h, and I'll get h as a function of the width. And so to do that, let's go ahead and uh, take 
we can subtract 8w, so we get 120 minus 8w is equal to 5 over uh, 5 times h, or we could just say that 120 minus 8w divided by 5 is equal to our height. So this is another way to express that constraint as a function of w. And I can use this uh, expression now to substitute into my optimization function. I want to get op the uh, area function here as a function of one variable, and this is going to get it done for us. So we can rewrite this area function. We still have the 4, and we still have w. But I can rewrite h here as this function of w. So this would be 4w times 120 minus 8w divided by 5. This allows us to think about the area only in terms of the width. And so now I could actually go out and solve for, well, what's the width um, that I need, or the value of w, to actually optimize the area? So let's go ahead and do some simplification first. And then we will consider uh, taking our derivative of our area function here. So we'll do a distribution first. We'll say that area is going to be equal to, we'll multiply 4w in and distribute this. We get 480 times w. And then we'll have minus 4 and 8 give me 32w squared and all divided by 5. Now, if you'd like, uh, we can um, rewrite this a little bit um, cleaner. Um, if we uh, rewrite this expression without uh, kind of distributing this 5 uh, to both terms, we could rewrite um, this expression as the area equaling 480 divided by 5. We can divide that to get 96w. And then we can say this is 32 divided by 5w squared just to distribute that 5. It doesn't go in evenly the second term, but looks a little bit better for um, taking our derivative. So let's go ahead and uh, take our derivative. We'll have a prime as our derivative here. And again, the reason why we're taking a derivative is we'd like to go ahead and see where this function here, this a function, um, has a maximum value. And we can kind of see that this is going to have another shape of a, a downward facing parabola. And so we will have a peak point. It's going to happen to be on the vertex. So we can consider that as our maximum. So let's go ahead and take our derivative here. We'll have 96 on one side. And then multiplying by 2, we can bring the 2 down to make a uh, negative 30, uh, 64 divided by 5 times w. This derivative function is a linear function, meaning we're just going to get a single solution, which is to be expected. So let's go ahead and set this equal to 0. Do that in the second column here. And say that 0 is equal to 96 minus 64 over 5 times w. Go ahead and solve this for w. We have a 64 over 5w is equal to uh, 96. And we can multiply here by the reciprocal. 5 over 64. Uh, to get our uh, final solution. Um, if we reduce this down, uh, we could put this in our calculator. I think it will uh, come out as a fairly even value. Um, if you wanted to reduce this uh, down, you should end up getting um, w as 7.5, or you could also represent that as 15 divided by 2. So both of those values would be um, equivalent to the width here. So we could just use 7.5 here. So in other words, uh, our dimensions here were in feet. So we have the, the width 
is going to be 7.5 feet. I'd like to know um, what the other dimension is because I do want to eventually find the actual area of the pen. And so we can go ahead and consider the constraint one more time uh, to consider how to find the height here. So if I list out my constraint, that was um, the height is equal to 120 minus 8 times the width. That would be where my width would go and then divide it by 5. And so we know our width here is equal to 7.5. So we just want to express this, again, that's coming from that constraint, solve for h. And if we go ahead and solve that uh, for h, we'll find that the height here is actually going to be uh, 12 feet. 12 feet. All right. And uh, just a small calculation here, if we wanted to actually find what is the total area here, we have our two dimensions. We have uh, 7.5 and 12. And we could go ahead and just put that in, back into the area function. So area, again, was 4 times the w, width times the height. So we'd have 4 times 7.5 times uh, 12. If we take that uh, all together as a product, um, we should get, looks like uh, 360 feet squared. And we'll call that as our final area here. So our dimensions would be the uh, width of 7.5, the height of 12 feet, and then we'll have a area total of 360 feet squared. And that uh, completes this first optimization. We have a couple more to take a look at, so let's go ahead and uh, jump into the next example. Uh, the next example on the top of our page here um, is a company is going to produce open topped boxes with square bases that hold 868 cubic inches. We want to know what dimension should the box be to use the least amount of materials. So first thing we can consider doing again is to consider a picture. And then we'll want to label that up and then consider um, what we're optimizing. So the first thing, let's go ahead and uh, take a moment to draw a little picture. We want an open top box with a square base. That's very important in this question. That'll help us a lot. So let's do our best um, rendition of a box. And we know that this box is going to have, again, a square base. So we'll try to draw this with uh, a good square base. And if it's not perfect, that's all right. We'll just try to draw this as decently as possible. There we go. So if this is our box, we are told that this box, again, has an open top, so there's nothing on the top here. So we're really just dealing with uh, walls and a base. Um, and so if I consider that as a, a the dimensions, if we have a square base, then I'm thinking that the... Um, we have maybe some height of a box. We'll call that H. And the dimensions of our base have to be the same, those side lengths. So maybe we call that, we call that W as well, the width of the box again, the width in the front, and the width in the side here are going to be the same. 
So we have a square base, and again, the height could be whatever height that wants to be. So there's kind of the picture that goes along with the open top box. And again, that would be just kind of maybe a cardboard box that doesn't have um, a top. But we do have really the, the four walls and the base to consider. So let's consider uh, first how we would think about the constraint. The constraint is what information they give us. So they give us that our box can hold 868 cubic inches. So 868 cubic inches is going to be the volume of this box. And so when I consider the volume of this box, even if we don't have the top, we'd have a, the same volume. We'd have a volume of the base area times the height, which we would express here as w squared times h. So that would be the, the volume of that box, all those dimensions multiplied. The quantity that we want to actually optimize is we want to optimize or minimize, in this case, the materials. We want to have the least amount of materials. So what does that mean for a box here? And let's just imagine this is a cardboard box. Well, that's the least amount of materials would actually be really the surfaces on our boxes. We want to minimize the amount of cardboard itself that we're using. And so that would be really a surface area question. So if I take a look at the surface areas that I'm working with, again, I don't have a top. So I'm thinking about the surfaces would be, well, one of the surfaces, and I'll just call this the area function, the surface areas. And again, this is what we want to optimize. Let's do that optimization function. My area is going to consist of, well, the area of the base, we call that just W squared. That's the area of the base. We only have one of those. And then each of our walls, we have one wall, two walls, three walls, and then the face here is a fourth wall. There's really four walls to the sides, and each of those have dimensions of W times H. So we can add to this four times W times H. That would be the um, vertical surfaces. And that would really uh, give us the whole volume of that open-topped box. Okay, so we've got our constraint. We've got an optimization function. Now we just want to kind of put this information together to be able to, again, minimize the area function. So let's go ahead and jump into trying that. Again, with a constraint, it'd be helpful to uh, solve for one of our variables to get area as a function of only one variable. If we look at the area function here, notice that if I substitute h as a function of w, that'll give us a function of only w. It's a little bit more difficult to um, do it the other way around since we have multiple uh, factors of w in our area equation. So let's go ahead and see if we can solve for h in the constraint function, and we'll use that substitution to help us simplify. So I'm going to, again, solve for the height, h. That'll leave me with a function of w. So we're going to have, uh, really, just dividing by w squared, I think, is going to give me h. That would be h is equal to by 868 divided by w squared. There you go, w squared. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and use as my substitution. We'll go the area here. The w squared stays the same. Plus, we'll have 4w. And then h will be 868 divided by w squared. We could go ahead and uh, do a little bit of simplification at this point to clean up our area functions. So that would be w squared. If we go ahead and multiply through 
with our 4 and our W. Uh, one of those W's is going to cancel out. And then we'll have to uh, multiply um, 4 and 868. I think you'll find that this ends up being uh, 3,472. And then we'll still have that, again, that W in the denominator. So we'll divide by the W that's left over. So this is the function that I want to uh, find a minimum for, and I think this does have a good minimum because um, this is still going to be kind of a, a quadratic-like function, but not quite, uh, because again, we have a w in the denominator. But I think we still are going to be able to find a minimum value here. So let's go ahead and uh, find our derivative function first. Uh, another way we can express this second term here is, again, if we bring that w up to the numerator, we have, really have w to the negative first power here. And that might be a helpful way to express that when we take its derivative. So let's go ahead and uh, take a derivative a prime. We have 2w for our first term. If we bring down a negative, we'll have negative 3,472 uh, 3, times w to the negative second power. And that would be our uh, derivative sitting right there. Now, if we wanted to set this equal to 0, solve for w, I think that would be our next uh, step in optimizing this. We want to find the value of w that uh, forces this derivative function to be equal to 0. We could rewrite this, set it equal to 0. We have 0 is going to be equal to, we have 2w, and then minus... 3,472, and then we could put this w to the negative 2 back in our denominator function, or denominator there. Okay. Uh, now we can just go ahead and see if we can rearrange um, these terms. Go ahead and try to solve for w the best we can. So if we add our Second term over, we could call that a positive 400, uh, 4,472 divide by w squared equal to 2w. We could multiply both sides by w squared. And we would get... Uh, 3,472, and then 2w cubed. Uh, we could also divide both sides by 2 to get our next term. Set so equal to w uh, cubed. Uh, that would end up being uh, 1,736, it looks like is equal to our w cubed. And last but not least, we'll need to take a cube root of both sides to get to the value of w. So we'll take a cube root and a cube root. Uh, another reminder, when we take, a say, a cube root of a value x, another way to express that, especially in your calculator, might be helpful is to take that to the one third power, just to Another reminder for you guys, x uh, cube root of x is the same as x to the one-third power. So that might be a helpful way to apply it in this case. So on the left side, if we take the cube root of that constant value, uh, we're going to get uh, something very close to 12. So it should be about 12.02 here. And then that'll be equal to our variable w. So that's our width. Again, this width should be in uh, inches, so we can go ahead and maybe label that in there too. So this is inches. There we go. 12.02 inches. 
Um, we'd like to go ahead and maybe see uh, the other dimension of the box. We do also want to find h. And so we can come back to our constraint. That would be a great place to solve for h. Again, we actually have that expression solved for h already. So we could say that h here is going to be equal to the volume that we started with divided by, again, w squared. So w squared in this case would be approximately 12.02 uh, quantity squared. So this will be a, an approximate for the height here, and that will come out to about 6.01, and that's again in inches. So practically speaking here, uh, if we used 6 and 12 as our dimensions, that's a little bit easier to measure. In reality, um, those dimensions would, would give us a good maximum or um, a minimum amount of materials. So um, hopefully uh, pretty practical here as in terms of an application, we want to minimize really the cost overall of our materials. Um, and so that would um, help with uh, limiting the cost, especially if all the um, sides here are made of, a, of the same material, which would be costing the same. So we'd like to minimize the amount of materials used. All right, so we have uh, one more example with a, a different geometric shape we want to consider uh, to finish out. Um, this question says that we have a uh, Valspar is considering giving away their new paint samples in small cylindrical cans that can hold 35 uh, cubic inches, and that's about a pint. What would the dimension of the sample paint can be to minimize the amount of materials used? Okay, so another uh, kind of a materials cost um, expression here. So let's go ahead and jump in and see, um, again, maybe a picture, and then we'll go to a constraint and optimization function. So let's start with our can. Our, we're gonna have a, some cylindrical can. And so if I look at a cylinder here, I'm gonna do kind of a little circle with some height. And this might not be accurate to the final dimensions, but it at least gives us kind of a a little bit of a picture to go with our thoughts here. We do know that this cylinder is going to have some height. We'll call that h, kind of a familiar variable for us. And then in this case, uh, our cylinder is going to have a circular base, and we'll have that as a radius r. So Cylinder can be described by its radius and its height. I think those are the only variables that we'll have to label here. Now we can consider, well, how would we express the volume? That's what they give us here. That's the 35 inches cubed. We'd say that regular volume, which we would call 35 inches cubed, well, we can express the volume of the cylinder by again, the area of the base times the height. It's very similar to how we did the box, but now the base is a circular shape. So we could say that the base area would be pi r squared times the height here would just be again h. So we know that the constraint here is the volume, which is 35 inches cubed. We call that pi r squared times h. So that would be our constraint. The second thing that we can consider is what are we actually trying to minimize here? We want to minimize the amount of materials used again. So the amount of materials used, again, has to think about the idea of the actual surface area of the materials. So let's consider how we would think about the surface area of a cylinder. And we'll do another picture for this. So 
since we have a cylinder, we can think of uh, really any uh, can um, is going to have some circular top. It's going to have also a secondary circular top on the base. And if we unravel really the and kind of cut the um, cylinder on its side and unravel this, we'll actually have kind of a rectangular figure that's going to come out and then another base circle, which is the same size. Let's make those similar in size. Something like, if I can make a circle, something like that. There we go. So we know uh, both of these circles, that's the base and the top of this can, just are circles of radius r. Now the kind of unraveled part, let's consider what the dimensions are with that. Well, one dimension we see here in the volume picture is just going to be h. Right? So one of the dimensions is just going to unravel as h. And the other dimension is really what's been unraveled around the circle. That would be really the diameter times pi, or the circumference of the circle. So that would be the um, circumference or perimeter of the circle. We would call that either twice, uh, or the diameter times pi. Or with our variables here, we could represent that with 2 times the radius times pi. And again, this is going to be the circumference. because we're unraveling kind of the perimeter of our circle on that one dimension. So if I consider the areas that are considered here, let's just label these as the areas. The middle area would be 2 times r times pi times h. And then the two circles would be just pi r squared with area. So when I consider the areas that are involved here, we can say that area is going to be equal to, well, we'll have two circles, 2 times pi r squared, and then we'll have plus 2 times pi times r h. I'll just rearrange those so that the coefficients there are in the front. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. That would be our um, area, surface area of our cylinder, and that's what we'd like to again minimize here to finish out. Okay, so looking at the constraint and optimization here, again, this is my optimization function. I can go to work to actually uh, see what the minimum value of uh, capital A is. So to do that, I think we're going to use another substitution technique. It looks like the value that we could probably uh, eliminate in the area equation is that value of h. So I'm going to use that constraint to solve again for the value h to be able to substitute. So just looking at this, I think I can divide both sides of this equation by pi r squared. I'll be left with the h. And again, h here is going to be equal to, looks like, 35 divided by uh, pi r squared. So let's go ahead and uh, use that to our advantage we will go ahead and substitute the values that we need. We'll have 2 pi r squared, that remains, and then we'll have plus 2 pi times r, and then h we have as 35 divided by pi r squared. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, continue the process. We'll go ahead and do a simplification step here. It looks like we could um, 
take and reduce down our R quantities, the pi's will also cancel out to 1. And we'll just be left with 2 times 35 and then divided by R. So we'll rewrite that one time. We have pi uh, or area equals 2 pi R squared. That doesn't change. We'll have the 2 and the 35 give us uh, 70. And then if I look at R, that's in the denominator right now. So I'm going to kind of do one little step with that. That R, the denominator to the first power, we can actually rewrite here as R to the negative first power. And it's kind of similar how we wrote the W previously. So I'll just go right to that. We'll have R to the negative first power. So here's my area function. We're doing pretty well, so I think we're, we're able now to just consider our derivative function. Let's go ahead and nail that down. We're going to have a prime here for our derivative. So doing a power rule, again, this is with respect to the r variable here. Everything else is constant. We'll have 4 pi times r. So we'll bring that 2 down and raise the r to the 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then we'll have next, we'll bring down the negative 1 again here. We'll have negative 70 and then r to the negative 2. So there's our derivative function. Next, we could uh, consider setting this equal to 0 and again solving for the value of the radius. So if I set this equal to 0, we could say that 0 is equal to 4 pi r minus 70. And again, r to the negative 2, we could write down in the denominator as r squared, just as a quick rewrite there. Now we can go ahead and uh, see where we could add and subtract. Uh, we could rewrite this expression as uh, adding 70 divided by 2r, r, or r squared over to the left. We'd have 70 um, over r squared is equal to the 4 pi r. We can then multiply by r squared on both sides. And we'll receive back just 70 equals 4 pi r cubed. And dividing over some constants here, 4 pi, we can reduce those and we'll be just left with r cubed. So this leaves us uh, with a r cubed equaling uh, 70 divided by eight pi, uh, 4 pi here. Uh, if we go ahead and think about taking a, a cube root, let's maybe write this one more time. I'll show the cube root. We have r cubed, if we want to write it on the left, 70 divided by 4 pi. We take a cube root of both sides. Again, that's the same as the 1 third power. I'll just represent it like that that's likely how you'll put it into your calculator. So raised to the one third power, just like that. We'll uh, get back just our r variable. And that r variable, um, if we reduce down to maybe two significant figures here, would be uh, 3.8 inches approximately. I guess we can use an approximate symbol. There we go. So 3.8 inches for that radius value. Now, this is not the only dimensions that we would have for our paint can. So let's see if we can find the height of that paint can as well. Um, if we look back up at our constraint, we have already kind of solved for that height in terms of r. And so we'll want to use that one more time. We'll just do that in the corner here. 
we know that h is going to be equal to 35 divided by, we have pi times r, which is our 3.8 squared. And again, we'll do an approximate symbol here for that one. Uh, if we look at that in our calculator, I'm going to confirm this one more time here. You can try this out in your calculator. We'll take our 35 divided by pi times uh, 3.8 quantity squared. Make sure that you have maybe a parenthesis around those two values there um, as you square in the denominator. It might come out a little bit different with the order of operations there. Make sure those pi and the 3.8 squared is, is grouped, um, you should end up getting uh, approximately 0 0.77, round to two decimals here, and that's again in inches for that final dimension. Um, now, the question is, well, is, is this uh, answer maybe plausible um, that we'd have a uh, cylinder with a 3.8 inch radius and then only a height of 0.77? Well, that's, that's an interesting question. I don't necessarily think that would be practical in terms of the actual use of space. Uh, it might minimize the amount of materials used, but it might not be uh, helpful in terms of storing. Um, usually can sizes don't have that relationship between the radius and height, so we'll want to recognize that in this question. Um, but it's an interesting uh, kind of trade-off of, you know, maximizing or minimizing the uh, amount of materials used and actually maximizing maybe the, the shelf space that we could have. So that would solve uh, this question at least. Again, um, how practical it is to have a cylinder in this specific shape is another question. Um, but at least we've, we've solved for dimensions that would give us the minimum amount of surface area um, used for that volume. So uh, thanks for watching these videos. Uh, look forward to uh, taking a look at the next section. We're going to be doing some related rates and um, uh, of some other derivative techniques. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.